Thank you for selecting our discounted cash flows video here at Acumen Learning. My name is Brent Barkley. I'm going to walk you through this method of analysis that many companies use to assess where they invest their, their dollars. The discounted cash flows method of analysis attempts to figure out the value of an investment today based upon the projections of how much cash it will generate in the future. As you look at this investment methodology, it considers certain terms, concepts, and metrics that you want to be aware of. First of all is the concept of time value of money. You may have heard companies talk about that. What's known as weighted average cost of capital is a metric that you'll hear them communicate around. So if you hear your companies talking about time value of money, weighted average cost of capital, net present value, or internal rate of return, they're talking about the discounted cash flow method. So let's start by talking about that time value of money. Let's imagine you invest $100 today and you put in your investment engine and three years from now it spits out and pays you $100. The question comes to mind is, is that a good investment? Hopefully you're saying, no, it's not a great investment. I didn't get any sort of return off of this investment. And you'd be absolutely correct. So $100 today versus receiving $100 in, uh, three years from now is not a great return. Well, this concept of what's the value of a dollar today versus a dollar in future uh, periods of time is called time value of money. What are we talking about? If you think about time value money is this, a dollar today is worth more than a dollar a year from now. So as you look at these investments, you're going to have cash outflow investing in the, the equipment, the projects or opportunities you're investing in, but you're also going to have cash inflows. You got to look at today's value versus these future values and how do you assess these investments based upon today's valuation? Time value money is the concept that a dollar today is worth more than a dollar three years from now. So let's imagine that you wanted to look at an investment that you actually do get a return. You invest your $100 in an investment that gives you a return of 2% uh, compounded every single year for three years. Maybe it's a simple certificate of deposit. So I put the $100 in today, one year from now at 2%, it'd be worth $102. Two years from now, it's going to now be worth $104.04. Now, three years from now at 2%, $106.12. The, the question is, so is it a good investment? Well, as you look at that, it's better than what we saw earlier, for sure. I'm actually getting a return, a 2% return on this investment. Now, the challenge is, is where does that cash that you're investing in your company come from? In most cases, it comes from a couple places. Number one is you as an owner or as an investor, you put money in the business. If you're publicly traded, an investor buys stock. That's cash that goes into your business. You use that cash to fund these projects. Not only that, but at the end of the year, you may not take all the profitability and send it back to your investors. Or maybe as an owner, you don't take all those distributions. That cash that you keep in the company, you expect to get a return on. The second way that many companies get access to cash is they borrow it from debt uh, financial institutions. Well, there's interest that you've got to pay on that. So you look at the dollars that you're investing in your company, you typically have a cost of using those dollars. That term, that metric is called weighted average cost of capital. Basically, it answers the question, what does it cost a company to use other people's money? Now, who are those other people? Well, it's, the, it's you as investors or your investors money or the debt that you're borrowing. It costs you to use those. Now there's a fancy calculation they do. Don't worry, you won't have to worry about it. All you're really looking at is what's our cost of capital and you wanna make sure that your return is much greater than that cost of capital. So let's imagine that same uh, investment of $100 becomes 106 in three years. Is it a good investment? Well, if you do your internal calculation, you find that your weighted average cost of capital is 7%. It's not a great investment, right? I'm investing that $100 that's costing me 7% every single year, and in return, I'm only getting a 2% return. So at this point, it's not a good investment. That's the concept of weighted average cost of capital. And the key thing you wanna think about as you invest your dollars is you wanna get in a return greater than your cost of using other people's money or greater than your weighted average cost of capital. Well, let's imagine you take $100 and it's a different investment. You make, take $100, you invest it over three years. And in three years, it's now gonna spit out $150. The question again, is this a good investment? Well, the challenge, you wanna figure out, well, what is that $150 three years from now worth in today's dollars? So how can I get a future value calculation of $150 and get it to present day value? Well, in order to do that, you've got to first discount 
those cash flows. Now you can pick various rates in which you discount. Some companies will use their weighted average cost of capital. So they'll basically say, okay, $150 three years from now, I'm gonna discount it each year by that 7% weighted average cost of capital. Now most companies though, they want to get a return greater than their weighted average cost of capital. And in some cases, the type of investments, they may want it two or three times your weighted average cost of capital. So they'll give you what they call a discount rate or a hurdle rate. Now, this hurdle rate is what we use as we then discount those future cash flows to get from future value to present value. So let's imagine that your company decides, hey, we want a 12% return for this type of investment. So I put in that 12% and use that as my discount rate. I go to that 150, I discount it by one year, it would be $133.93. I discount it by 12% for another year, it's now down to 119.58. I bring it all the way to present day and today's value, $150 in three years, discounted at a 12% discount rate, would equate to a present value of $106.76. Now at this point, this is where the concept of net present value comes into play. I'm gonna take both present value of the cash inflows and outflows, and I'm gonna net them against each other. In this case, that $106 of inflow minus the $100 going out in outflow for your initial investment, gives a net present value of $6.76. That's the net present value. Basically, the value of all future cash flows, positive and negative, over the life of the investment discounted to present day rates. That's what you're trying to get to. So in this case, the $6.76. Now, how would you use this in decision making? If your net present value is a positive number, that means you are getting a return greater than that discount rate that, you, that you're being asked to use. So it's gonna be higher than that 12%. So if it's positive, for some companies, that's good enough. Okay, it's a, it's a positive number, that means it's greater than our discount rate. Okay, we'll at least consider it. But many companies wanna take one more step. They wanna say, well, then what is the actual rate of return I'm getting? We call that the internal rate of return. The internal rate of return financially defined is the time weighted return of an investment expressed as a percentage. The higher the rate of return, the better uh, that investment. So as you look at this calculation, how do we get to that? Now there's a lot of number crunching that goes on. There's computer programs, there's fancy calculators that can do this calculation. Most of the time your internal finance team will take care of this. But the basic way you try and get to that is you're gonna take that net present value, you're gonna set it to zero. I'm trying to get a net present value of zero, which then I'm gonna back into what is that internal rate of return. You put in your fancy calculators, your computer program, and it's gonna spit out a disc, uh, internal rate of return. In this situation, to uh, $150 three years from now, invested over three years, is gonna be a 14.47% internal rate of return. What does that tell me? Well, uh, my actual return for this investment is 14.47. Now, if my hurdle rate or my discount rate is at 12%, I'm getting 2.47% higher than that uh, uh, hurdle rate, which is a very positive thing for your internal team to consider your project or your investment. That's called the internal rate of return. Well, folks, what you'll find with these calculations is often not just one outflow and one inflow. So let me give you a quick example as you look at that inflow and outflow of that calculation. Let's imagine that you do $100 today and in a year from now, you get $60 come in and you have 20 more dollars going out. Two years from now, you have $80 coming in, cash flows coming in, and you have $35 going out to maintain the asset or other investments you have for that asset. And then at year three, you got $90 coming in while $35 coming out. Well, what's gonna happen is they're gonna, first of all, get the present values of each of those cash inflows and outflows. So in year three, that $90 minus the $35 is gonna give you $55 three years from now of cash flows, positive cash flows. Year, two years from now, it's gonna be $80 minus 35, that'd be $45 of positive cash flow. Again, one year from now, that 60 minus the 20 is gonna give you a net positive cash flow of $40. At this point, you do that same discount. At a 12%, that $40 becomes $35.71. $45 two years from now, discounted over two years at 12% becomes $35.87. And then $55 discounted three years is gonna be $39.15. Well, at this point, we're back to that net present value. You're gonna take all the present value of all the inflows, present value of all the outflows, and you're gonna do your net present value calculation. Now, because it's positive, what does that tell me? Is my, is my internal rate of return gonna be higher or lower than 12%? 
because it's positive, it's gonna be higher. So you again, set that net present value to zero, do your calculation, that's gonna spit out a 17.8%. What does that tell me? That says for this project, I'm getting a 17.8% return, much greater than the 12% they're expecting me to get from it. Now, does that guarantee they're gonna actually do the investment? Not necessarily. There's other factors that play out. Feasibility how it fits within your strategy, competition, regulatory. But at least if your internal rate of return is significantly higher than that, that uh, discount rate your, your, or your hurdle rate, they absolutely will at least consider that investment. Well, folks, as we wrap up, let me just summarize the key principles I think you should take away. Number one, remember that a dollar today is worth more than a dollar a year from now. We call that time value of money. Number two, it costs you to use your investment dollars. We call that the weighted average cost of capital. Figure out what that is and make sure that your investments are going to be greater than that weighted average cost of capital. Net present value, if that's positive, that means your return is greater than the hurdle rate that you're using. If it's negative, it's less than that. Again, we wanna make sure that our returns are greater than the expected rate our uh, investment community expects from us. And then finally, that internal rate of return gives you the actual return you're getting on this investment. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the discounted cash flows methodology, a methodology many companies use to determine their investment dollars. Thank you very much and have a great day.